There we go. <laughs> <laughs> And there we go. You thought it was hot outside. Well, it's going to get even hotter right here, right now with that two main hot blondes. Am I allowed to call us that, Jen? <laughs> <laughs> well, you look like you're you still are. You like won a-, a beauty competition. Well, you could easily do so yourself, my darling heart. Anyway, so Jenny's sitting there in Antibes looking all still, like even though it's autumn, autumnal apparently over there. And she said, oh, she had to put on a jersey the other day. Well, of course, we've been sweltering up here in, well, down here in South Africa, up here in Johannesburg specifically with temperatures like 31 and over. And we're still in spring. I mean, 23rd was the vernal equinox, okay? which means that was the beginning of spring. It's like we're in the middle of full summer already. It's and, completely and, crazy. In fact, how's it now? Um, in how's fact, it, Jen? <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I saw, just launch right in. Um, I saw that the emergency services in Johannesburg or Gauteng were actually warning people to be careful this week. I think it's going to last till Friday. Mm. And it, it is, you know, crazy, crazy temperatures for you guys although i remember once getting really burnt in september in joburg where we weren't expecting it to be hot so we were on a floaty in the pool all day and i got third degree burns and um i couldn't sit on the loo i was like so burnt oh my yeah. goodness me no well i mean yeah. you know september is kind of capricious but then most of us born in september are as well oh um, i love that <laughs> because because if you think about it sometimes you can get burnt and sometimes it snows so who knows yeah. you know and and as everybody says who can trust the weather reports anyway <laughs> so <laughs> we're just waiting for rain and not too soon because and, interestingly interestingly yeah. and i know you're going to ask me a question ask a question Okay, because you mentioned water, rain, I've heard about this water shedding potentially. What does that mean? Okay, in the same way that um, they they throttle our use, (laughs) I'm I'm using the word euphemistically, they throttle our use of electricity, let's just call a spade a spade, rolling blackouts, okay? And then on top of that, the the substations and the aging infrastructure, of course, are not able to keep up with the on-off, on-off, on-off the whole time, so they're all falling apart, which is what happened in our area, and and like a huge area was without power for like a whole day. Um, I don't know how any of us are supposed to work. When it comes to water shedding, what's happening, and I I'm open to correction on this one, but I think it has to do with the fact that there's no electricity to pump the water up into the reservoirs. So um, we got the message, I think, yesterday or the day before to say that water shedding is coming. We have had it before. Who did you get the message time. from? Oh, from like the city of Joburg. Usually, oh, okay. I mean, so an official message. A, official message, but it's usually coming out from a councillor who actually knows what's happening because who knows what's happening when it comes to anything to do with yes. politics in this country. Y- y- your your mayor got ousted. Oh, let's not go there because it makes me very cross. So we're not going to talk okay. about that. So okay. water shedding, I think it's there's really just not enough electricity. There's not, and, and then they yeah. throttle the water, that which is going to you. So, you, I mean, look, I'm a water, as somebody in the Park View area once called me, oh, who died and made you the water czar? I said, actually, I'm the czarina, so get a grip. Um, I have been advocating for um, people being a lot more careful with their water usage for years now. And in fact, in my house, it's the same thing. And I said to my friends when the message came and, they, and she went to turn on her tap and she's in Parkview, and I said, oh, you're going to have to actually start like, you know, getting buckets of water because you're going to have to flush your loo like that because there won't yeah. be any water to flush. She just goes, oh, it's okay, I've got a swimming pool. And I'm thinking, well, I don't. <laughs> what about the rest of us? It's all okay for you. But I mean, fortunately, um, I must admit that it doesn't really give me too much um, of a, I mean, I take the one minute shower kind of thing. Okay. My kids are used to that as well. We, it's, you know, it's more it's the yellow, toilet that's the problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, we, we keep a bucket of water on standby just in case. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and wow. I fill the bucket up with the shower water as well. So when you're showering, you don't waste all the water. Because, I mean, why, why use good drinking water to flush your loo anyway? You know, Absolutely. use water that's recycled to flush the loo. It's all going to do the same thing ultimately. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it might be looking very bleak. You should be water czarina. Things would, would uh, cheer up very quickly. 
Jenny, I should have stayed in politics all those years ago. I'd have had this country running like clockwork. They would have made the Swiss move over, boy. This place would be working. Um, yeah, I'd get rid of all the dead work. And I'd, I just love some of the ideas that people are coming up with to say, hey, government, why aren't you looking at this? But then, as I said, you know, government, you aren't fit to run a 100-meter race. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> it's not really going to happen. But anyway, so I'm, I'm trying to find um, any little bit of humor in these things that I can. Um, it is a bit difficult, but basically, there isn't anything you or I can do about it, especially when you're sitting in France, which is like, you know, <laughs> you can't do a thing from there. We cannot do we anything. We can raise awareness. We can, that's the only, that's what I was going to say. We can raise awareness. Yeah. Please just take it easy on water wherever you are in the country, because if you run out of water, that's it. You're done. Well, I remember in Tanzania, they used to have... Um, big ships from from Norway or somewhere mm. that would bring water to them. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so they, they might have to tow an iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And but, then somebody was saying that they should get those ships from, where was it, from Turkey, that they should come and park off the coast here in South Africa. But I don't think that there's any money left to be able to pay them to be able to do that, <laughs> okay, because they stole all the money. <laughs> but Mal, I thought of you this week because we did a story on um, this amazing South African expat who moved to Australia and he was he was in Australia in his 50s and they said, I, no, 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 sorry, in his 70s, sales manager turned 70 and they say, out you go and, um, you know, you're too old and doddery now. Mm. And, and he thought, no ways, I've still got so much in me. And he kind of had your sort of energy, you know, he, he walks a lot, he does Pilates a few times a week, etc. And so he took himself off to the, the, the technical college there, which is called TAFE, and mm. studied farming and opened a, a macadamia farm, which is now so successful that he's just been featured on ABC this week in, in Australia. He's 91 years old now. And, and he says it is all about your attitude. And if you just Absolutely. think positively, you can change things. You know, you just have to switch off the negative thoughts and go on to positive. It is, it is a little difficult for a lot of people, though, when, you know, the news coming out of the country is so bad. The politics is absolutely ridiculous. The people are revolting. <laughs> and, you know, you, you're living with the, under this continual threat of having no power and no water, which is actually a crime against humanity because it's yeah. a human right. It is enshrined in our constitution. Not that the constitution seems to actually make that much difference to much, many people, seeing as now that one of the parts of the constitution, the... Um, they've overturned the whole thing about um, expropriation land. of land without compensation. So, I mean, it's been like, you know, sitting there and thinking, well, these things can really make you down. And, and, and people are leaving in droves. Absolutely just decided that's it. We're out of here. So some of us are staying and we will do everything we can and in our power to try and make things better. Let's put it that way. And yeah, if I was saying to people, if we can all come together with a positive mindset and actually say, what can we do to make a difference? Yeah. There's nothing we can do about the government who are ruining the country, sorry, running the country. Um, but well, you can, we can vote. Actually, yes, but unfortunately, the majority of, of, of the country are still going to vote for them. And so a lot of nothing. people are moving to Cape Town as well, just, just to oh, yeah. say. I, I saw another one this morning, you know. I've had five know. friends in the last month move to Cape Town. And yeah. I'm seriously thinking that might not be a bad idea. And coming from but, you, that's a big thing. Yeah, for me to move back to Cape Town, it would have to be like mega because I'm very much a Joey's go, uh, Joey's O. There we go. Anyway, and we've so got an article today for you, which yeah. is if you move to Cape Town, um, which is the five, uh, five fantastic places to beaches. go and eat. No, no, we've oh, done the, the beaches, place. okay, but yeah. this is this is that's for summer, except summer has arrived, it appears. But this is five places that are great that are under 100 Rand. Wow. I mean, that's, that's incredible. That, I don't think you'd find one place in Europe like that. So, and it's, and it's, it's got like Cape Malay food, fish and chips, like everything. Oh, Fritters. that sounds up my alley. I'm definitely going to yeah. have a look at that. On the, is it on Facebook as well? Yes. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so what news do you have for expats this week? Well, touching on the tragedy that happened on Monday morning, uh, Monday afternoon, when a German tourist who had just arrived at the airport and was excitedly driving to the Kruger Park 
um, got shot and killed uh, in, a, in a failed hijacking. Um, following on from that, just some advice for South Africans abroad who are wanting to, and for South Africans in SA, um, who are still wanting to go to the Kruger because on the whole, of course, it is safe. Um, mm. And also to spread the word to other foreigners overseas. You know, it's our South African expats who can really fly the flag for us abroad um, and encourage tourism, which South Africa needs so desperately for finances, for job... Um, job creation. Yeah, yeah, job opportunities and everything. Um, is that Sand Parks yesterday, and it is on SA People with all the details, but, you know, keep away from Numbi Gate. They were, on the, they were on the Numbi Road on the way to the gate. There have been quite a few incidents there this year, so it is a crime spot. Keep That's away... That's White River, hey? Correct, correct. Yeah. So, so rather head... The, this is what Sand Park says. Rather head to Paul Kruger and Fabeni, Pabeni? Pabeni. Pabeni, Pabeni Gates. Gates. Yeah. They, they are both fully operational. They signposted, and you can get to all the lodges through them. Um, Sand Park also says really plan your trip ahead. Only make stops at designated areas like garages and service stations. Try to travel in convoys where you can as well. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> it sounds sounds like all the information that they were giving us whenever you wanted to go up to Zimbabwe in the, like the yeah. latest late seventies, and the people used to go through in convoy. Yeah, Do you remember that remember through to Bulawayo. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. now talking and we about, really are so sorry. Um, you know, yeah, just to our condolences to those yes, that family. Yes. It's absolutely okay. heinous. Um, I think that they really need to get on top of getting security sort of locked down in this country, apart from locking yes. down the human beings, that all the people that live here locked down. The <laughs> but, but also, you know, on the, on the sort of positive side, um, it's terrible that a tourist gets more care from the government than local people. You know, 67 mm. people a day die in SA but you know at the hands of somebody else and mm -hmm. um and and so a lot of south africans are saying oh this you know isn't isn't fair kind of thing however i think just take the spotlight and use it because you know this is forcing the government to step yeah. up uh, the police ministers going to the scene today you know they have to address crime when it comes to the rest of the world and tourism so yeah. um yeah, hopefully mm. good will come from this tragedy. Well, yeah, so, I mean, it is, I mean, it's prime time for Kruger at the moment as well. I mean, with the people coming in, so they need to sort this out very quickly. Um, I see you've got some here about the Black Mambas. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you're not talking about the actual Izinyoka, which I would love to go and take <laughs> and pop into. Although we don't have Parliament anymore because they burnt it, didn't they? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so wherever they are meeting, go and take those Mambas and go and throw them the Izinyoka in. I think that would be quite an interesting thing to be a fly on the wall to watch. Well, but then we're talking about different black mambas yeah we are but these black mambas have the same effect on poachers so this is um south africa's first all-female anti-poaching unit and right. they have made such a difference to poaching you know to to reducing poaching um and two of them plus the founder are in london this week so on thursday evening if you're anywhere near south africa house there is a free event wonderful event where they'll be announcing some exciting news about a new anti-poaching unit um plus you can meet them chat to them and just find out what is going on with um the the war against rhino poaching in south africa okay fantastic well done to them i think they're absolutely brilliant anybody yeah. who does any of that is fabulous and then i, I don't know did, um did you put it up here sorry i haven't i've, I've had uh, no power <laughs> because we had not only load shedding but a power outage and no internet connectivity i've been feeling that bit of internet list listlessness <laughs> okay so because um i don't know something happened with the fiber and so i've just been sitting there not being able to actually access very much at all but it's but fixed my, now my brother 
Yeah, no, fortunately, yeah, finally. There right. are some good people out there, and also they don't want me nagging them as much as I do. Um, my brother sent me through the video of um, Sia Kulisi with the toast to Roger Federer for, uh, Federer, uh, Federer for Moet. With yes. that whole toasting. Oh, that's beautiful. I loved that. I just thought it was absolutely fabulous. It's so beautiful. And so for anybody else anywhere in the world, they can, they can join too. Just do a toast to Roger and... Um, and then Moet will donate to the Roger Federer Foundation for everybody that does this toast to Roger. Says, toast to Roger, well done on a great career. And I'm so happy that one of your family is South African. There we go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect. And, and then post yeah. it to Instagram, obviously. Yeah, okay. So is that information all on there on um, the sapeople.com? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Mel, and congratulations on pronouncing Moet correctly. Because... Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yes, Moet. Yeah, so uh, most of us will just say mut. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh no, <laughs> that's true, <laughs> mut like but. But um, no, a lot of people think that uh, that they must pronounce it the French way and go moe. Moe. But meanwhile, moe. the the guys, um, the family, uh, yeah, are originally from Holland, from from the yeah. Netherlands. Yeah. No, I know. I, I I like to find out the right pronunciation. It's like if people call me Milani. <laughs> that's ne bru. <laughs> okay, so um, now expat South Africans, of course, the one that has really hit the headlines this week with all kinds of people saying all kinds of things that he's done his time after seven years on the late night show, whatever whatever the show was called. The, the Daily the, Show. The Daily the Show. The Daily Show, yeah. Yes, yes, uh, yes. With Trevor, Trevor Noah leaving it. Yes. Why, did, why has he left it? So, so yeah, a lot of people are saying, oh, because the figures dropped so drastically. But I think that they, you know, if they would just read, for instance, our article on SA People, um, the figures dropped very similarly, about 60%, I think, which, which is a lot, mm -hmm. for almost all late night hosts. So mm -hmm. it's just what has happened in the last few years. I think, you know, because of, of the pandemic and, you know, the, the late shows not being live, you know, with real people in, in studio. Mm. Um, it affected everybody. And plus, people are watching on YouTube. And, you know, Trevor has over 10 million people on YouTube. But yes, less than a million were actually watching the show. Uh, however, he said that what happened is on his seven year anniversary, and we do have the video of him saying this on the site, um, on the seven year anniversary, which was a few days ago, uh, his producer said to him, hey, it's your seven year anniversary today. And it sort of got him thinking and he, um, he, he went the seven year itch. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He went to sleep that night, woke up in the morning and he thought, yep, no, seven year That's itch. And, and he really misses the stand up comedy. Um, mm. so, so he's getting back on that. And in fact, he's going to be in South Africa pretty soon doing stand-up. Well, I'm going to have to make sure that my one daughter is still stuck up in the bush and not back here because otherwise I have to go searching for tickets because she absolutely <laughs> adores Trevor. Oh, she that's thinks he's, so good. She says, he's my biggest fan. I think she meant to say I do. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, really but you, know, you know what I find really upsetting with all the commenters on social media is it's like these famous South Africans, um, Charlize Theron, uh, Trevor, uh, Elon Musk, you know, they can do one thing, just one thing, and then they are just evil and hated and, you know, the stuff that comes out of people's mouths, it's just... I know, what comes out of their fingers when they type up yes, the warriors. Yes. I'm like, bring bring yourself to my face. And Let, the, let's have the talk about know, this in real life. Exactly. Yeah. Both they Trevor and Charlize. I mean, Charlize, most of the stuff that's said about her was was totally fabricated it was mm. a photoshopped picture that went viral um and and you know ruined her reputation for many south africans and and the thing is is that both of them have done so much for south africa both of yeah. them have foundations that raise so much money to help education health etc for south african children so um Jenny, and we should be proud of them feel, feel sorry for these people because they obviously don't have a life that's yeah. all there is to it. Okay? okay. And I mean, they would never, ever stand up and say things like that to people's faces. So let them hide in their anonymity okay. and spew their filth and be unhappy people because you know what? That's all they have. 
Literally, yeah. that's all they have. No, so I feel very, sad. very dreadfully sorry for them. Um, and uh, if I had to believe some of the stuff I heard about myself over the years, I mean, I'd have had a completely different life. That's <laughs> <laughs> so true. Do you remember yeah. some of the stuff? I mean, it was oh, like for I years. Know. I mean, that I'm friends with season. you is just, I deserve a badge. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay, you, well, you mentioned Elon Musk. Is he still going to try and buy Twitter or what's happening? Yes. Yeah. So, so it's been a bit of a yo-yo and they were meant to be going to court um, on the 7th, which I think is Friday. Uh, and then this week he sent them a letter saying, actually... He would like to proceed with the purchase because what would happen is if they went to court and Twitter won, he would have mm. to pay anyway. So this way now he's paying, he gets to own Twitter or take it private. Um, the banks, I think, are going to lose quite a bit. Um, mm. and, and Elon says it's, you know, one of his main ambitions is to create this app and it's the everything app. And it's going to be called X. And he says mm. by buying Twitter, he can do it three to five years quicker. So, so that's his plan. I don't go onto Twitter unless I have to actually send a WhatsApp to City Power Johannesburg. That's it. <laughs> you mean a message, Literally. not a WhatsApp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, a, tw a tweet. A tw yeah, you see, I'm a tweet. I don't remember these Twitter. things. So. Um, but but uh, but I do agree with Elon. There really are too many bots. And, you know, mm. what he was waiting for was he was asking them, tell us exactly how many bots you have. Um, mm. I and, and I think it is a, a huge amount. I, I think I've told you, you know, every day we get new followers that have, that, that have just started that day and they have zero followers themselves and there's zero yeah. other people they're following. You know, I don't think I just, it's I a just, real like, human. I go and check out everybody's sites and usually if it has, if it is that situation where they've only just joined and they only have like, they've got hardly any followers or whatever, or I see the Forex trading, cyber <laughs> trading, <laughs> they yeah. get deleted immediately. Yeah. Anyhow, so let's get on to some local good news. I think we could have a little sparkle in our lives right now. Okay, well, staying with good things like Moet and that is the International Wine and Spirits Competitions Award were this week, this last week, and South Africa won for both the red wine producer of the year and the white wine producer. So oh, that's cool. pretty awesome. For the champagne, it was a, a, a French champagne. Um, so, the, so the red wine is Canon Cop. Mm -hmm. And the white wine is Jordan Wine Estates, which is okay. a husband and wife team. So I saw you got there the white, but you spelt wine with an H. <laughs> I'm just thinking all of those Karens sitting in the northern <laughs> suburbs, <laughs> vining away. Would you like some cheese with that wine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy. Okay, sorry. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Okay, and I saw, now finally, uh, I, I heard the news on my way here this morning about South Africa beating India by 49 runs in the third and final 2020 match. Yes, Even though international. they did lose the series, but, you know, yeah. go after the bang. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so well done yeah. to them. And, and also, I did forget to, to um, note it, but Andy Burkett, uh, a South African canoeer, he just won gold at the, world, at the Canoe Marathon World Champs in Portugal. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. How, how many times has he done the doozy, though? <laughs> and that's what I'd like to know. <laughs> find it out. We want to find out if he's done the doozy. I, I would I'm love to do the doozy, sure. but it's hardcore and it's hot. You think Joburg is hot at the moment? You go down into the doozy when the marathon is on. My goodness, it's like 90% humidity, 40 degrees heat. Oh, you just stand there with water dripping off your fingertips. It's hectic. You know, I once went to the doozy because it was obviously near me. And... Mm. Um, and, and I must have been about 18, 19, I was at university. And this man who was in it asked me to look after his baby. <laughs> his wife would have died. I had never held a baby in my life. And I fed this baby grapes. I had no idea. And the baby pooed out solid grapes. Ooh. Really dangerous. <laughs> it's really dangerous. You know, you know that um, you can choke. I mean, a kid can choke on grapes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just remember my godson when he was a baby, he's now like 20-something, 
And he was terrified of grapes. I used to terrorize him. They used to take the grape and, hold, and go, ooh, ooh, look what's coming towards you. And he'd be shrieking. <laughs> I wonder if he drinks wine, because at least they crush. I don't think, you know, and, and he's scared of bananas. Anyway, that's, you know, it's just a thing. That generally, boys have that issue. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's leave that one alone. The only thing we want to have to do with, with well, you want to do with grapes, of course, is what. Although, my goodness, my friend for, um, brought me, um, because I said we're not eating cake, we don't eat any of those things. Things. And she knows that these grapes called candy, which you can get at one of our stores here, and it's a, a it's a kind of, it tastes a bit like a Harlequin grape, but my it tastes like Sweeties. I'm oh, sure it's just nice. pure sugar, but you know it's still one of your five a day. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it's got all those wonderful things in them that actually kind of are good for your body. But home, oh, I've never tasted anything like this in my life before. It is just oh, the most fine. Fine. Yeah, I'm not. I think they're from the Cape, but oh my goodness me, what a grape! Um, a great well, grape. you're going to have to find out exactly what it's called and where we can get it's it. It's called if candy. it's being exported. I'll find out where it comes from, but it's can. It's called okay. candy. I'll find out for you. Okay. Um, yeah, and just a oh, shame, man. You know, we had the comrades not too long ago. Did you see that the the comrades legend Samuel Shabalala passed away at 65 this week? And it's so yes. sad. Yes, I loved the tribute, though. I mean, he mm. really made a difference. He he was the first um, black athlete to win the comrades. And they say, you know, thanks to him, there were just hundreds and thousands of people who started running, who mm. got fit because he was such an inspiration. It's so. been amazing to see all of the tributes pouring in from people all over, you know. Yeah, yeah. Th some people might have thought, oh, no, he's a kind of a, a forgotten hero. But, um, yeah, makes and your he heart feel... he was still doing warm. Hmm? Warm. He was still doing... Hey, he was still doing it. No, it makes your heart feel warm. Oh, it makes your um, heart feel warm. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Makes um, your heart glad. <laughs> yeah. He was still doing a lot of good things. I think in his community where he had grown up himself, he had um, uh, like campaigns to get the local kids running and, and all that. Talking about communities and just going back a bit to where we were talking about um, the the. German tourist. Yes. He was on his way to a game lodge. A lodge, actually, yeah, speaking community. I mean, that's yes. where it's so important that the criminals just stop, <laughs> is that this this lodge was a com is a community-owned lodge where he was on his way to, and mm. it employs 200 people from the community, which is one of the strongest anti-poaching measures you can do, because if mm. the community can benefit with jobs and it's sustainable they're getting a salary every month you know poaching you get money one off you're putting your life at risk actually mm. working and 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 getting a relationship with the animals and nature is just you know immeasurable the value there mm. and um and and so that's you know really sad if, if tourists don't want to go to places like that anymore so yeah. Yeah, we need to get that going. Okay, and, and, and then also talking about like families and communities. Uh, what is this? I, I've missed this story. As I said, I haven't been online all that much. About the Limpopo families raising money to drill their own boreholes? Yes, it's, um, it's about, uh, oh, sorry, I can't remember now, but it's 30 or 300 families mm -hmm. who basically have not been getting water um, from the municipality since 2008 or something which is around about mm. when Zuma took over, uh, coincidentally or not. And, um, and so, so they finally, finally gave up and decided to do it themselves. And they all put in what they could, and they managed to raise 200000 to drill their own boreholes. They have um, completed two of them. Mm -hmm. They do need a little help to finish the third. Uh, ground up, got involved and contacted the municipality who promised that they were going in last week, but by Monday they still hadn't gone in. But no, these families we, have now at least got water. You've got to do it yourself. I mean, the, the water, yeah. scarcity of water has been a huge issue for so many people, not just in Limpopo and now in the cities, but um, I remember when we went, um, Pomalanga has got major issues as well. We went back in, I think it was 1988, 
or it might have been 85, I'm trying to remember, it was in those days of the beauty pageant days when all of the beauty pageant girls were getting involved. And we got taken by World Vision. Do you remember World Vision yeah, that happened in yeah, South Africa? Yeah. With Mallory, I can't remember his surname, but John Savage, the actor, used to come out to South Africa because he was one of the patrons of World Vision. Yeah. And we went to a place called Falvater. And they hadn't had water there for I don't know how long. And World Vision was actually working um, together with the community to make sure that Falvata got water. And it did work because now apparently they do have water, um, whether it was through boreholes or whatever. But um, I mean, it, it's a basic human right. Yeah. OK, so why the governments and the municipalities are not actually taking more care of this and looking after their people, I don't know. But Because they don't make money from it, perhaps? Well, because it takes money out of their pockets, perhaps. Yeah. Um, I think that, unfortunately, what we're going to have to do is everybody in the community, we can't just sit there and say, well, there's nothing we can do. As we were saying earlier, get with the program and start doing what you can. Yeah. And that's all. Okay, so, interesting. we talked last week about uh, Blood Psalms. So, I did say I was going to watch it. And yes, did I you? Did. Oh. I watched the first episode, yeah, but I, then, I, then I had no more power. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, literally, I mean, the inverter, everybody's inverters went for a loop. I don't have one. My UPS stopped working. Um, so, I didn't get to watch much of it. So, I just watched the, the one beautifully shot. Oh, oh my goodness. Amazing. It is absolutely exquisitely shot. I really love what they've done there so I'm, I'm going to watch the rest of it as well Fantastic. You know, you've got to, got to watch more than just one and i see yes. that you stein heist yeah uh, yeah another one that that i really think everyone should watch and you can watch it if you're overseas as well if you've got show max mm. um you know about south africa's biggest corruption ever yeah. uh, um corporation corruption yes um and and then also um, what's her name? Kim Engelbrecht. Yes. And Reka, except yes. in, uh, except overseas, it's called something different. But but Reka and Kim Engelbrecht, who Mel and I interviewed um, on this podcast, are both up for grant for Emmys, That's international Emmy awards. Isn't that brilliant. amazing? Absolutely. So yeah, brilliant. her obviously for best actress. Um, mm. So, so that's really exciting. Him, yay! <laughs> so, if you're in South Africa, you can watch Raker as well. And then, you know how much I loved White Lotus. Yes, it was fantastic. Well, you know, season this two is coming one. up at the end of October, and this yeah. time it's not Hawaii; it's Sicily. Oh, okay. That yeah. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of moving to Sicily. My brother and I have been discussing it. Oh, really? Oh, I'd love mm -hmm. it if you were there. Sort of, sort of yeah. around the corner and down the boot. Down the boot a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're looking at, the, at that. <laughs> I'm not saying I, when. <laughs> We've still got a lot of work to do here first. Yeah, okay, you can so buy whole we're, villages we're, there for... Yes, it's one of those I'm going to, Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go and buy a village. <laughs> <laughs> for a hundred grand. <laughs> and go and teach people. That's what I can do. All right, so oh, it's World Teachers up? Day today, by the way. Oh, well... But, we were talking about this with my, I was talking to my kids and saying, you know what? Teachers deserve so much more than they're given, regardless oh, of where they are in the world. Thank you to all the teachers yeah. and thank you for putting up with our children's nonsense. It's teachers, police thing. officers and nurses. and nurses should all be paid so much more. The most valuable jobs. It's it's kind of crazy. I think I need to take over the physical fitness training for the police officers, though. I think that would be a good idea, seeing as that was going to be part of my portfolio in 1994, according to the uh, Mail and Guardian, they, when they were looking at all of the celebrity nominees for politics. They said, yeah. Women are going to make exercising compulsory for everybody under the age of 65 and probably over too. And I thought, Oh, most of the time you'd find me called up with a good book and a bottle of tequila. But anyway, that's fine. We can do that too. Anyway, what have you got coming up on SA People next week? And, 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 and I've got to just quickly say a shout out to the um, French police officers who don't need any extra training. They seriously are hot. Like, I love having to go to the police station. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, officer. Please arrest me. <laughs> so, so coming up, Last night, they announced the top 50 world's best bars. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there were no South African bars in that top 50. However, in the 51 to 100, there are four bars. And so okay. we've got that coming up. And there's one particularly that I think that you would love. It's, um, it's in Cape Town, so when you one day move there. And it is um, in a motorbike store. 
Mm-hmm. But it's also a coffee shop, some men's is, is it in near gardens? I wouldn't know. I can tell you what it's called. Okay, tell me what it's called and I'll look it up. A house of machines. Ooh, I like yeah. machines. I'm, yeah. I'll take, I'll, I'm definitely going to go down and pay brother a visit, so I'll pop in there. I'll say, Stu, we have to go to the house of machines. He knows when I get into a car or a bike shop, then there's all kinds of things. Happening. It looks <gasps> divine. Ooh, and, and then there's, there's also one in Joburg, actually. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's Sin Plus Tax Bar. Have you no, heard I've of heard that? I've heard of it. Yeah. It's, it's really it, cool. It's, it's at a pizza place called Coalition. And then you mm. go to this metal door and you have to knock a particular tune to get in. Okay. So you're going to yes. have some rhythm going. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll look forward to that with glee. And until then, of course, everybody <laughs> can go on to sapeople.com or onto the Facebook page and check out what the big stories are. And don't forget to share your stories with us too. We love hearing from people at home and abroad. Jenny, we'll catch up with you again next week. Take good care of yourself. Don't and spend too much you time too on the beach. Thank you, Mal. Lots <laughs> of love. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.